Hello, I'm Chris. Four in five people taking their driving test will be asked to follow directions from a sat-nav for roughly 20 minutes. In this video, we're going to have a look at what it's like to follow a sat-nav on the driving test, and I'll be giving you some tips along the way. The examiner provides the sat-nav. If you have your own one, then make sure it's switched off for the test. At the start, they'll normally place the sat-nav on the dashboard if possible. But if it's not in a good position, then you can just ask the examiner to move it a little. You won't have to touch or program the sat-nav yourself, as they will do it for you. Although the sat-nav will be on during your driving test, you'll only have to follow directions from it when the examiner asks you to. Sat-navs on the whole are really useful, but you still need to be fully aware of your surroundings and make sure you're driving safely and legally. At the end of the road, turn left. This is the same model of sat-nav as they use on the driving test. And at the time of filming, it has the most recent software update. It normally gives good clear instructions as you'll see later on, but there are some certain things you need to be aware of. The sat nav shows you what speed you're driving, but it shows a different speed to what's on the car's speedo, so don't take any notice of this. The examiner won't either. It also shows what it believes is the current speed limit, but don't look at this either as it's not always up to date. Instead, keep a look out for traffic signs like you normally do. Turn right, then you have the sat nav doesn't know about recent road closures and can direct you down roads you're not allowed to drive. Although if this happened on your test, then the examiner would intervene and help you. Don't forget, if this happens once you pass your test, and you drive down a road you're not allowed, it won't be the sat-nav that gets into trouble, but you. Always check where the sat-nav is directing you and make sure it's safe and legal. As long as the sound is enabled, sat-navs verbally give directions, but they can sometimes be a little confusing. Here I'm just going ahead at the crossroads. At the end of the road, turn right, then turn left. But is it really right, then left? Turn right, then turn left. Turn left. This shouldn't happen on your driving test as it's a clear pre-programmed route. But it's a good example of how you should also occasionally glance at the screen to see where you're going next. The sat-nav can tell you to bear left, and it's a left turn off the main road where a left signal is necessary. After 100 yards, bear left. Bear left. But it can also tell you to bear left, and it's a bend to the left where you have to follow the road round. After 100 yards, bear left, then go straight on. Bear left, then go straight on. Go straight on. Remember not to just listen to the sat-nav's instructions, but also glance at the screen occasionally to see where you're going next. But only glance and don't stare. Don't let the sat-nav distract you, and as usual, keep planning ahead. If there are any confusing directions, then just ask the examiner to clarify where you're going. Let's now have a look at part of an actual driving test route following directions from a sat-nav. I'm starting my test here, and the examiner has asked me to follow directions from the sat-nav. For the first two and a half minutes of the drive today, we'll concentrate on how what you see on the sat-nav and here relates to what you see in front of you. Then after that, I'll show you what I'm doing with my feet, the speed I'm driving, and which mirrors I'm checking. 
The sat-nav can be a bit unsure which direction you're pointing at first, but as soon as you start moving it will sort itself out. In case you didn't already know, you'll have to follow this light blue line. Turn left. At the top of the screen, it shows you your next direction and how far away it is. Really tricky to see to my right at this junction, emerging out carefully and slowly, especially looking out for cyclists and motorcyclists who are harder to see. The sat-nav shows that in 800 yards I'll be turning right at a roundabout. But not everyone is familiar with yards. How far is a yard? Well, if it helps, one yard is equal to three feet. There's 1,760 yards in a mile. Or if you prefer meters, it's at the bottom of the screen. On the driving test, you don't need to look at this, this, or any of this, as we're only using the sat-nav for directions. The sat-nav will give me spoken directions as I get closer to the roundabout. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. As I get nearer to the roundabout, the sat-nav will tell me again where I need to go. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Give way to any traffic approaching from the right. Check mirrors and signal to exit the roundabout. I can see a 40 mile per hour speed limit sign ahead. Before accelerating, I must check the mirrors first to make sure that it's safe and no one's overtaking me. I've got a clear view of the road ahead and the conditions are good. But bear in mind that the speed limit isn't a target speed but if it's safe and conditions allow, then I'll try and make progress. Always drive safely at a speed that's right for the conditions. The safety of others and yourself depends on it. Being overcautious and driving too slow can be a problem, as you could possibly hold up traffic, annoy other drivers, and they might take risky chances to overtake when it isn't safe. When driving at higher speeds, it's important to look further ahead. If you're used to driving at 30 miles per hour, then remember it's going to take you longer to stop. According to the highway code, the overall stopping distance at 40 miles per hour is 36 meters, which is nine car lengths. The stopping distance is how far your car travels from the moment you realize you need to brake to the time your car stops. quick glance at the sat nav and I can see that I'll be turning left at around about in half a mile. It's easy to forget what the speed limit is, but keep a lookout for small repeater signs like this one that reminds you. But not all roads have these. If you miss a direction given by the sat nav on your driving test, then don't panic. As long as you're driving safely then you won't fail your test or even get any driving faults. If it's safer to miss a turn as you've spotted it a bit too late, then just go past it. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. If you do take the wrong turn, then the examiner or sat nav will just redirect you back on route. I'm looking far ahead as I approach the roundabout and it looks fairly busy left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Some new drivers stall when moving off at busy roundabouts. To help, here's what I'm doing with my feet. Car on my right, brake in, clutch down, select first gear, a little gas, raising the clutch to the biting point to creep slowly, see my opportunity, accelerate and raise the clutch. Up to second gear, up to third and a 30 mile per hour speed limit. Only go when it's safe and don't take any unnecessary risks. Pedestrian crossing, no one's pressed the button so it should stay green. Not giving it enough gas is a common reason for stalling at roundabouts. When you need to move off quickly 
accelerating is so important. Raising the clutch on its own will probably make the car stall, or you'll move off slowly, which could be dangerous if the roundabout is busy. If you struggle with roundabouts, then try and approach them a little slower, just to give yourself a bit more time to work out what's going on. Of course, plenty of practice with a qualified instructor will definitely help. After driving at 40 miles per hour, 30 feels quite slow now, especially on this wide road. It's really easy to start driving over the speed limit without realizing it, so be careful and remember that it's 30 for a reason. The sat nav is showing that in 600 yards, I'm turning left at a roundabout. I can see a red traffic light ahead. If I start to slow down now, I might not need to stop completely. Keeping in the left hand lane will help the person behind overtake. Select first gear, gas, and raise the clutch slowly. The road narrows ahead, checking my mirrors, and a quick sideways glance for anyone overtaking at the last moment. The left hand lane isn't always for going ahead, so keep a lookout for those signs and markings. After 300 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the second exit. At the traffic lights back there, I tried to time it so that I didn't have to stop. You can't always time it, but if you can, then it's a great way to save fuel. Go left on the roundabout and take the second exit. I'm taking the second exit, so I won't signal until I've passed the first exit, as I don't want to confuse anyone. Zebra crossing ahead, no one wanting to cross. Obviously, it's important to concentrate when driving, and once you've passed your test, the sat nav along with many other things, can be a distraction, including loud music, passengers in the car, and of course, your phone. A study which looked at crashes involving young drivers showed that 12% were operating or looking at their phone. The driver spent an average of 4.1 seconds out of the final six seconds before the crash not looking ahead at the road. 4.1 seconds is a long time, and this is what just over 4 seconds of not looking feels like. <gasps> Driving while using a handheld mobile is not only dangerous, but illegal. Results from a number of studies have shown that you're four times more likely to be involved in a crash. There's lots of distractions inside and outside the car, but when driving, it's important to stay focused on driving. During your driving test, you can expect the examiner to ask you to pull up on the left numerous times. One of those times will be on a hill. They'll then ask you to drive on when you're ready. Well, it's not safe to go yet, so I won't indicate and I first need to prepare the car to go. Clutch down, select first gear, gas, biting point, check mirrors, blind spot, signal, and maneuver. As I'm driving uphill, I need to change up a gear later than if I was on a flat road. Build up momentum before changing up a gear, otherwise the car will struggle. To avoid stalling when moving off uphill, it's important to give it a little more gas than if you was on a flat road. Getting the biting point was also essential, otherwise, as soon as I'd released the parking brake, I would have rolled backwards. When you reach the top of the hill, be prepared to ease off the gas slightly if needed, to avoid going over the speed limit. The car will need less power than when you're driving uphill. Glancing at the sat-nav, I can see that in two miles, I'm turning left. Good dry conditions for driving today, and I've got a clear view of the road ahead. This is part of an actual driving test route, and hopefully this video will give you a rough idea of what a test route is like. But test routes get altered all the time, and of course, there's much, much more to learning to drive than just going over test routes. Planning ahead, I can see the flashing beacons of a zebra crossing. 
check my interior mirror, check the crossing, no one on it, or walk in towards it. That zebra crossing had an island in the middle, so you'd treat it as two separate crossings. There was a sign back there that said in half a mile, the road ahead is unsuitable for heavy goods vehicles. Well, I'm only in a Fiesta, so I'll be fine. But it could mean that the road will get narrow. Although I'm using the same model of sat-nav as they use on the driving test, you can practice using any sat-nav, as they're all very similar. Another zebra crossing ahead. Check my interior mirror. Off gas slightly. Check both sides of the crossing. And it looks clear. The road is getting a bit narrow ahead. This part of the road doesn't look as well maintained as the main roads. A sign warning me of a crossroads ahead. This road looks like it's getting tighter and there's a good chance I could meet some oncoming vehicles in the centre of the road. Looking out for any passing places just in case I need them. Oncoming car. Now if I slow down in this space, change down to second, and I can continue without having to stop. Another passing place on the left there. Another space on the left that I could use here. Oncoming vehicles, off gas slightly, looks wide enough. Keep planning ahead, and look out for any passing places that you could use. Can't see as much road ahead. We're slowing down, change to second, keeping left for a better view, ready for oncoming. Signs warning me back there that the road will narrow on both sides and accompanied horses or ponies likely to be in or crossing the road. This road is tight. I'm keeping left, but I don't want to hit the curb. Still looking out for passing places, there's one there. There's also some big ditches at the side of the road I need to be careful of. Just slowing down. Looks wide enough. I've got a space on the left I could use. Let them pass through. It looks too tight ahead, so I'm just going to wait in this space. Watching out for the hole in front, which could cause damage to the tyre or wheel. Check my mirrors, avoid the hole. It speeds up so easily downhill. Braking gently. Bend to the left ahead. I'm ready for any oncoming vehicles that might cut the corner. Big hole on the left. Much better view of the road now. Signs are warning me of a side road. Accompanied horses or ponies likely to be in or crossing the road. And the road is liable to flooding, but not today. So easy to speed when you go downhill, so be careful. The sign is now warning me of an uphill. The car's starting to struggle a little uphill, and I can't see what's around the bend. Down to second, and now the car feels like it has a bit more power. My view ahead isn't great, and the road is getting narrow. Always be ready for what danger might be round the bend. After 300 yards, turn left. Hang on a second. This is a small repeater sign that reminds me what the speed limit is. This road had a 40 mile per hour speed limit? Since when? The sat nav shows a 40 mile per hour limit, but it's not always up to date. I have to rely only on the signs, and there wasn't a 40 mile per hour sign back there. It was definitely missing. The last speed limit sign I saw was 30, so I had to go with that. Being ready for what might be ahead, there could be horse riders, pedestrians in the road, or oncoming vehicles. If you're expecting a clear road, then you might get surprised by something. 30 mile per hour speed limit, and a bus. Turn left. Thank you bus driver. A junction on a steep hill, approaching slowly, Plan to go, ready to stop, 
first gear looking right left right left double checking it's safe no need to stop look properly at junctions it's so easy to miss something observe not just for the big vehicles such as cars and lorries but also for cyclists and motorcyclists only go when you're absolutely sure it's safe The sat nav is showing me that in one and a half miles, I'm going ahead. Whichever sat nav you use, it's important that you use it safely and legally. Position your sat nav so that it doesn't block your view of the road and make sure that you program it before you start driving. A 40 mile per hour speed limit ahead, but be careful not to speed up when you see the sign as it's the start of the 40 mile per hour limit where the sign is. Always check your mirrors before you speed up, just in case someone is about to, or is overtaking you. The examiner has asked me to pull up on the left in a safe place. You can expect this a few times on your driving test. Parking brake on, select neutral, cancel signal. The examiner has now asked me to move off again. The vehicles behind me are driving quite fast and I've got to make sure that when I move off that I don't cause anyone else to slow down, stop or swerve. I've got an opportunity coming up here. Prepare the car, check my mirrors, blind spot, signal when it's safe and manoeuvre. The speed limit is still 40 miles per hour. It's not safe to drive at 40 though, because at the moment there's a bend ahead, the road is narrow with parked cars, and a car in front. A car ahead is turning right, check interior and left mirror, slow down a little, looks like there's room to pass. The car picks up speed so easily when driving downhill. I can see a 30 mile per hour speed limit ahead, check my mirrors, slowing down, and don't forget, the sign is where the new speed limit starts, so it's important to reduce your speed before the sign. Now the speed limit is 30, it's more built up, potentially more pedestrians, parked vehicles, car doors opening, maybe vehicles reversing out of driveways, and many more hazards. After 800 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit. During your driving test, the examiner will ask you to do one reversing manoeuvre, which will either be pulling up on the right-hand side of the road and then reversing two car lengths, or parallel parking, or forward bay parking. Depending on the test centre, you could be asked to reverse bay park. Along with one of those manoeuvres, you might also have to carry out an emergency stop. can see the sign warning me of a roundabout. I'm following the road ahead. The road markings show that I need a left hand lane to go ahead. I can see the blue circular mini roundabout sign. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Looks clear to go and I don't need to signal to exit as there's not enough time. 40 mile per hour speed limit. A bend to the left ahead, and it has an advisory maximum speed of 30 miles per hour. The two solid white lines in the centre of the road mean that neither the oncoming vehicles or myself can cross or straddle it. But there are certain circumstances when you are allowed, as you can see below. They have the lines here as it would be dangerous to overtake. 
I bend to the right ahead. The speed limit is still 40, but that's a maximum speed. It's certainly not safe to drive at 40 here, as I can't see round the bend. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Always drive at a speed that will allow you to stop well within the distance you can see to be clear. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. I can see at the top of the sat-nav screen and on the sign that it's an exit to the left. The indicator often goes off when you don't want it to on roundabouts, so make sure it's on when needed. The speed limit is still 40 miles per hour, as I haven't seen any signs telling me any different. After 300 yards, you have reached your destination. 30 mile per hour speed limit ahead. Check my mirrors and slow down. You have reached your destination. We made it. This is where the examiner will now tell you that it's the end of the independent driving and they will direct you from here. You won't need to pull over, just continue driving. If I was on my test now, I've probably got about another 10 to 15 minutes left until the end. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. I just want to thank everyone that has subscribed to our channel, liked our videos, and even bought us virtual coffees. It means a lot, and I really hope this video and how others help you in some small way. Really appreciate you watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to help us make more. If you've got your driving test soon or you might be watching this the night before your test then good luck. Don't forget that someone, most likely your instructor, is letting you borrow their car for the test which must mean that they feel you're ready to drive on your own and test ready. So be confident. Take care on the road and bye for now.